Okay, let's get you a little extra coverage here with our SMX insiders, some extra questions and answers with the great James Stewart. Let's talk 250 East opener at Houston, James. Okay, everybody kind of thought Hunter Lawrence would be the favorite coming in and qualifying other guys were fast, but Hunter ends up winning the main. What did you see in the uh, 250 East class, which included a lot of young guys as well? Yeah, I was excited to see the East Coast. I always feel like it's almost like that break after Loretta's and they show up at Unadilla. Um, you know, you get the, the kids from Loretta's coming in highs and uh, award winners and, and all that stuff. So the East Coast is usually where the rookies come in. Um, so I was excited to see the East Coast. I felt like Hunter, from all I've seen and heard, he was going to be a factor. And him being not that fast in practice or not the fastest in practice um, didn't really surprise me because that's kind of how he is. Um, he looked good in the main uh, heat race. He looked good in the main event, of course. He can thank JS7 that he didn't land on the hay bale because back in the day, long, 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 long time ago, I'm the reason they took hay bales off the landings of the triples because I oh. used to hit them and then go down or uh, tough blocks per se. So uh, I was just telling Cole on the show, you know, when uh, Tom Diao, which is another rookie who looks good, by the way, he started cutting over on him and he had Hunter had flashbacks of Styles Robinson, what happened at Southwick when he got cut down and he was doing the Matrix and stuff. So, um, you know, he took that risk out and he jumped off the track, but he looked good. Um, Danger Boy came out. I, I thought he looked pretty good. I feel like for for him, the track was a little bit more um, tame compared to what it was last weekend at Anaheim, you know, having the, the 90s and stuff a little bit more difficult. But um, yeah, I thought Hymas looked great. That Bial kid looked really good. But at the end of the day, Hunter, Hunter was kind of in his class of his own, really. Everybody wants your your take on Hayden Deegan. You've talked about him on the Bubba's World podcast quite a bit. So yeah, uh, fourth place, obviously on paper, is great for a Supercross debut. What do you see, and you've talked about this on their show, the times you've seen Hayden Deegan ride, what do you think of him as a talent coming through the ranks? Well, I, I think the kid has a lot of talent. I mean, Hayden, he, he when, when I watch people ride, I look at certain things, you know, not necessarily results. Like, he ended up four, but would I say he was the fourth best guy? Like, no. Uh, fourth more talented? Like, maybe even higher than that. Like, he does a lot of things that you can just tell there's a lot of future and growth that can be there to where he can be doing what Hunter just did and dominating us but yeah i just talked about how there's a lot of pressure on this kid um you know just with the family and the deegans they're great people his sister doing what he does and just his following on youtube so I mean, he had me watching it was excited to see him come out here overall the kid's gonna be fine on there there's still some parts that he's struggling but like the future and the, the upside to him he's gonna be fine hymas look good like i i felt like he looked like a better version of how he did in the futures. And a shout out to AMA and, and Fell for allowing these kids to be able to come out and have that futures program because you had the arena cross, but be able to come out here and race on the same track as Cooper Webb, Eli Tomac, Under the Light, Chase Exon is why when you see these kids come in here, they're not getting hurt. You know, I mean, they, they, they're more prepared for this because they had an opportunity to come do that. So shout out to you guys for being able to, to allow them to do that. And I think it just only makes it for better racing. So he looked good. Again, the Valley, um, Tom Bial, he looked great too. Yeah, it was interesting to see that these rookies, we didn't see those typical rookie yard sale crash mistakes. So yeah, yeah maybe Futures is a little bit responsible for that. Uh, one last topic, and I hate to bring this one up. Your brother, Malcolm Stewart, he's going to be out for a while with a knee injury. And the first two rounds results-wise weren't what he wanted either. He's going fast. So that's a bummer there uh, for the Stewart camp. Yeah, it was definitely, it was hard to see him. My brother, one, because he's, what, my brother? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's hard to see any of these guys get hurt, but especially Malcolm, because I've seen how much, um, you know, he worked in the off season, but everybody works on there. But I, I was actually excited to watch what was happening, even though the results wasn't um, where he wanted to. I mean, he was 16th, 16th or whatever, had this two DNFs or bad finishes. I saw a lot of things, kind of like when I watch Hayden, like there's a lot of upside to that. And even though the results wasn't um, good, he was doing something better than he was last year, which I believe it was going to end up in a win. So having him like be out and, and basically, I don't know, he's going to be out for a while, um, have to kind of start that program up. Uh, it was kind of hard to see that because I think we were going to have a first time new, uh, new winner this year. Um, but I think if you're going to go out, it's best to go out the way he did. Like there's a lot of speed and there is the confidence for him that he was able to win that heat race in the faction that he did. And I believe um, 
you know, we're going to work some stuff out this off season. I think when Malcolm comes back, I think he'll, he'll, he'll be on another level next year. Oh, that's the news people wanted to, to hear. The knee injury news, not good, but Malcolm being back strong. That's what we wanted to hear. All right, James, yeah, awesome. thanks fun. for giving us some extra time and uh, we'll see you in Tampa. Thanks. Yeah, sounds good. A pleasure. Welcome to SMX Insider Extras here. We'll give you some additional data. Myself, Daniel Blair, and our stat man, Clinton Fowler here. We want to talk to 250 Supercross rookie class, all making their debut at Houston over the weekend. And since we're on YouTube, let's talk about the big YouTube star. Hayden Deegan, last minute, decides to make his Supercross pro debut, and he gets fourth. Fourth, that is phenomenal. So give us some data on Deegan. Yeah, incredible ride from Deegan. Um, and for a rookie, right? Like, what do you expect coming in in that first race? Um, you know, there's one thing that I saw with with Hayden Deegan that I think is really, really impressive for a rookie, and that's on the fitness side of things. I saw that his lap times are actually the most consistent of all the riders across the entire race. And by most consistent, from his slowest lap time to his fastest lap time, it's the smallest gap. So he maintained his pace throughout the race, just as good as the the veterans in there, the Jordan Smith, the Jeremy Martin. So, you know, we, I'm, I just think it's really impressive that he was able to do that. A fourth, one step off the podium, pretty impressive start to the to his his rookie year. Clinton, I know this is not fair to do, but we're going to do it anyway. I want to know about some of the great 250 riders of the past and what their rookie season and debut looked like because we're super hyped over about this group as and they deserve to be hyped up. They were awesome. But how do the greats look when it comes to 250 debuts? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> it's a pretty tough comparison because there's some pretty impressive rookie seasons. Um, one that I personally always love to, to look back at is Trey Kennard's rookie year uh, back in 2008. Uh, the Geico Honda rider um, won his first three races, took the championship. I think two things that stick out. One, he beat Ryan Villapoto, um, which is absolutely amazing to ponder in a rookie season. And then second is that race um, where he ended up uh, maybe pushing Ryan a little bit wide into the uh, the finish line structure. Um, a pretty <clears throat> amazing moment in history in a, in a rookie season to come out and ultimately have four wins uh, in and take the title. So Trey Kennard for me is one that uh, really stands out as an all-time great rookie season. Hey, uh, I'm going to take every opportunity to get Damon Bradshaw mentioned in any form I can. I see the data here, Damon Bradshaw, the beast from the East. He was 16 years old. He podiumed a premier class Supercross. Then when East started, he dominated that. Yeah, I mean, Bradshaw, I, I remember days from Loretta Lynn's as a kid watching him in, in the A-class, the B in the A-class, and just impressive. But obviously, as a 16-year-old kid goes pro, his <clears throat> he wins the 1989 125 East Championship, six wins and nine podiums. Just an incredible season when you think about being that young um, and showing up. You compare it to some of the guys today, and the expectations obviously a little bit different. But man, the beast from the East, Damon Bradshaw, was <clears throat> absolutely impressive. Uh, impressive stats in his first season. We just want to mention the other rookies that we did have this weekend. Uh, Tom Vial finishes seventh, and Chance Hymas finishes eighth. But Daniel, just talk about that. I mean, the seventh and eighth looks good on paper, but honestly, you could probably say they were even better than the result. Yeah, the eye test, I think they nailed it. Vial was uh, – I, I, he was just way better than I thought he was going to be. Hymas, I expected him to look good. I didn't expect him to be that good in the racing and, and some of the racecraft moves he made. But, yeah, Clint, I'd like to know how these guys match up with maybe like a James Stewart. Obviously, it, the numbers are going to probably be insane. Uh, but from what did you see from Tom Vial, uh, Chance Hymas, that makes you think maybe they have a chance to be a great – uh, they all would love to be a James Stewart, but obviously that's going to take a little <laughs> bit more. Uh, but I, I did see good things of them and the hopes are high. Yeah. I mean, Tom Vial, I think was one that really stood. I mean, both Tom and Chase, uh, or excuse me, Chance, they had both, both of them had amazing starts. That's going to be really, really important. I'm kind of excited to see when they get starts like that, especially in the outdoors, that makes such a huge difference. So both those guys, <clears throat> um, impressive first outings. Your point about James Stewart 
he's got to be the most touted amateur coming into the pro ranks, right? Like, I, I don't know of anybody else that, that was more touted than James. Um, but interesting enough, he didn't win his championship in the rookie season like some of the others we've talked about. He got second, which is not not, not too bad. Uh, three wins, five podiums, impressive rookie season um, in 2002 in the 125 West Series for James. Um, but didn't didn't get that that elusive first you know rookie season title. One thing he does have, which we've talked about on the West Coast, he is one of three riders that's won both the East and the West Coast championships, which we know Jet right now has his, has an opportunity to bring his name in and be the fourth one to do that. So um, Stewart, an impressive rookie season, um, but maybe not not quite on par to say the Trey Kennard or Damon Bradshaw um, who won their titles in the rookie season. Well, the problem for Stewart was he won races, but he had some crashes. Bradshaw actually did two. He only won the title by a small margin, even with all those wins and podiums. Uh, and the, the crashes are usually the issue, not the speed, right? And uh, we can look at uh, Carmichael's actually rookie year to point that out as well. He got wins, but the points, that was a problem. Yeah, it sure was. You know, I reached out to, to RC yesterday uh, and asked him when I was looking up the rookie season, his 1997 season, he ended up third in the 125E series, um, which Again, amazing result. He had three wins, four podiums, um, so some impressive stats. But the thing that really stood out for me, to your point, he had some crashes. His first race, you know, you compare it to what these guys did this weekend. His first race, he got 19th. <laughs> and I, I asked him, I said, so what, what happened? And he goes, what didn't happen? <laughs> was his response. He's like, everything that would happen, you know, what you would expect to happen as a rookie happened as a rookie. He's like, I got a, a mediocre start. I was mid pack. I was coming through and he ended up landing on the back of Brock Sellards, crashed, broke his clutch perch. Um, <laughs> and, and just, you know, what, what you expect of a rookie debut, which we didn't see from Hayden Deegan. We didn't see from Tom Vial. We didn't see from Chance Hymas. So really impressive to see these three guys go out, have really great weekends um, as a whole and not make the mistakes that say an RC made in his first career race. Well, Clinton, thanks for joining us for extra content on SMX Insider. It's always fun to talk to rookies and see where they compare and well, I hope they turn out like Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart and those guys because they turned out to be okay. So, Clinton, thanks for coming on. And for Jason Waggett and myself, this was the SMX Insider Extra content on YouTube.